Welcome back to another video. If you want to move ahead to the top with the rest of the squad, you got to be a part of the squad. Together we represent the bio squad. And all you got to do is subscribe, like, relax and finally watch and learn. This is the 9700 February March 2020 paper 12. Let's get started, shall we? Question 1. The diagram shows an eyepiece graticule and cell viewed through a microscope. When the eyepiece graticule was calibrated at this magnification, the whole length of the graticule shown covered 12 divisions of a stage micrometer scale. There were 100 divisions in 10 mm of the stage micrometer. What is the actual length of the cell? The diagram over here shows the eyepiece graticule and the cell side by side. And when this eyepiece graticule was calibrated at the same magnification, the whole length of the graticule shown, that is 100 divisions of the graticule, covered 12 divisions of a stage micrometer scale. And they have mentioned there were 100 divisions in 10 mm of the stage micrometer. Therefore, in the stage micrometer, 100 divisions is equal to 10 mm. Hence, one division is equal to 0.1 mm. And since this given IPS graticule covers 12 divisions of the stage micrometer scale, 12 times 0.1 mm will give you 1.2 mm. That is, 100 divisions of the IPS graticule is equal to 1.2 mm. And since the cell only covers 30 divisions of this IPS graticule, that will be 0.36 mm, or in other words, 360 micrometer. As if 100 divisions represent 1.2 mm, then 30 divisions will represent 0.36. You have to do the ratio over here. Hence the answer is C, 360 micrometer being the actual length. Question 2. Which cell structures can form vesicles? Cell structures given are cell surface membrane, endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi body. Now some think that the cell surface membrane is not involved in forming vesicles. However, it actually is. Cell surface membrane is involved in the formation of vesicles during endocytosis. As endocytosis is a process by which cells take in substances from outside of the cell by engulfing them into a vesicle. Therefore, yes, cell surface membrane can form vesicles. If you look at Golgi body, Golgi body transports substances in vesicles to be excreted out of the cell during exocytosis, that is, the process of releasing substances out of the cell. Therefore, Golgi body is also involved in forming vesicles. Is the endoplasmic reticulum involved? Yes. We already know that vesicles can bud off from the endoplasmic reticulum, hence endoplasmic reticulum is involved. Therefore, the answer is A. Question 3. The diagram shows three circles, 1, 3 and 5 representing chloroplasts, mitochondria and typical prokaryotes. Which row correctly identifies the three circles and some of the structures that are shared between them? All three, the chloroplasts, mitochondria and the typical prokaryotes do have 70S ribosomes as well as circular DNA. Therefore, if we go to the answers A, B, C and D, a. Chloroplasts and mitochondria, they have circular DNA. Yes, that is correct. Mitochondria and prokaryotes, they have 80S ribosomes. That is incorrect, as they only have 70S ribosomes. Answer B. Chloroplasts and mitochondria have 80S ribosomes. Again, that is incorrect. Answer C. Prokaryotes and mitochondria, they have circular DNA. Yes. Mitochondria and chloroplasts, they have circular DNA. Yes, that is also correct. Hence, the answer is C. Let's look at D. Prokaryotes and chloroplasts, they have 70S ribosomes. Yes, that is correct. Chloroplasts and mitochondria have 80S. No, that is incorrect, as they only have 70S ribosomes. Question 4. Which cell structures contain RNA? 1. Centrioles, 2. Mitochondria, 3. Nucleus, 4. Ribosomes. A key thing you should remember is that any cell structure that has ribosomes has RNA in the form of RRNA, that is ribosomal RNA. Mitochondria, nucleus and ribosomes, they definitely have RNA. As mitochondria has ribosomes, hence will have ribosomal RNA. Nucleus will have RNA in the form of mRNA, as mRNA is formed in the process of transcription in the nucleus. And ribosomes, they definitely have RNA, as again ribosomes have ribosomal RNA. Centrioles do not have ribosomes as well as RNA. Hence, the answer is C, 2, 3 and 4 only. Question 5. 
It is possible for a bacterium to synthesize a eukaryotic protein. This involves introducing a eukaryotic gene into the bacterial DNA. The eukaryotic gene is then translated by the bacterium. What explains why a bacterial cell can produce a eukaryotic protein but cannot produce a eukaryotic glycoprotein? Processing of proteins is done by the Golgi body, such as adding of sugar units to proteins. When a sugar unit is added to a protein, it forms glycoprotein. Since the bacterial cell cannot form glycoproteins, it indicates that no processing is done and therefore no Golgi bodies. Hence the answer is D. Bacteria do not have Golgi bodies. Question 6. Which structures are found in typical prokaryotic cells and also in typical plant cells? If we go to the answers A, B, C and D, the most obvious answer is A. Cell walls. As both prokaryotic cells and typical plant cells have cell walls, but only the substance which makes the cell walls is different in the two. In prokaryotic cells, it is made up of a peptidoglycan substance, whereas in plant cells, it is made up of cellulose. However, cell walls are present in both. Hence, the answer is A. Question 7. The molecule shown is a polymer of reducing sugars. Which procedures could be carried out to show that this molecule is a polymer of reducing sugars? Since this is a polymer, we first have to hydrolyze it and then carry out the Benedict's test, that is the test for reducing sugars. There are different ways to hydrolyze. We can carry out enzyme hydrolysis as well as acid hydrolysis. Enzyme hydrolysis is where we add a hydrolytic enzyme and then you heat with the Benedict's solution. Therefore, procedure 1 is correct. And acid hydrolysis is where you boil it with hydrochloric acid, then neutralize and then heat with Benedict's solution. Therefore, procedure 3 is also correct. Why is procedure 2 wrong? Remember, we only need to neutralize only if an acid has been added and not dissolving in water. Hence, the answer is C, 1 and 3 only, as all the other statements have procedure 2 in it. Question 8. Which statement about biological molecules is correct? A. Amylopectin, amylose and cellulose are all polymers. Yes, that is correct. B. Amylose, cellulose and glucose are all macromolecules. Why is that incorrect? Because glucose is a monomer and not a macromolecule. C. Cellulose, glucose and starch are all monomers. Why is C again incorrect? It is because starch is a polymer of alpha glucose and starch is not a monomer. D. Sucrose, starch and amylopectin are all polysaccharides. Well, sucrose is not a polysaccharide, however a disaccharide. Therefore, D is also incorrect and that leaves us with the answer being A. Amylopectin, amylose and cellulose are all polymers. Cellulose is a polymer of beta-glucose and amylopectin has 1,4 and 1,6 alpha linkages and amylose has only 1,4 alpha linkages. Hence the answer is A. Question 9. Sugars with a ring structure can also have a linear structure. Which of these sugar molecules could be represented by the linear structure in the diagram? 1 glucose, 2 ribose, 3 sucrose. This is definitely not a ribose, as ribose has only 5 carbons, whereas this given structure right here has 6 carbons. Hence, options A, B and D are incorrect since they all have 2 in it. Therefore, the answer is C, 1 only. Question 10. Which statements about phospholipids and triglycerides are correct? 1. They contain ester bonds. 2. They both have 3 fatty acid chains per molecule. 3. They both may have saturated and unsaturated fatty acid chains. 4. They are both used only as storage molecules. Statement 4 is obviously incorrect, as only triglycerides are used as storage molecules and not phospholipids. Phospholipids, however, they form part of the membranes. Therefore, answers having statement 4 is obviously incorrect and that leaves us with the answer being either A or B. And a triglyceride has 3 fatty acid tails, whereas in phospholipid, one fatty acid is replaced by a phosphate group. Therefore, statement 2 is also incorrect, as they both do not have 3 fatty acid chains. Only triglyceride has 3 fatty acid chains. Therefore, the answer is B, 1 and 3 only. Question 11. The diagram shows three examples of three different bonds. Which bonds hold the secondary structure of proteins together? Secondary structure of proteins usually involves only hydrogen bonds and no other bonds. Therefore, since only bond 1 shows hydrogen bonding, the answer is C, 1 only. Bond 2 represents peptide bond and peptide bond is only involved in primary structure. 
bond 3 represents disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges and bond 3 that is disulfide bonds is only present in the tertiary structure. Therefore bond 2 and bond 3 are incorrect leaving us with the answer being C, one only. Question 12. Hydrogen bonding explains many of the properties of water including the high latent heat of vaporization and high specific heat capacity. For which processes in plants is hydrogen bonding in water important on hot sunny days? 1. Preventing denaturation of enzymes in leaves. 2. Reducing water loss by evaporation. 3. Allowing leaves to cool down quickly at night. 4. Holding the column of water in xylem vessels together. Statement 4 is obviously correct, as yes they do hold the column of water in xylem vessels together due to presence of cohesion between the water molecules, and cohesion involves hydrogen bonding. Therefore, statement 4 is obviously correct. That leaves us with the answer being either A, B or C. Why is statement 3 incorrect? It is because the question talks about hot sunny day, not during the night. Therefore, statement 3 is obviously incorrect. And that leaves us with the answer being 1, 2 and 4 only. Hence, the answer is B. Question 13. What is the most appropriate set of controls to use in an investigation into the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction over a range of temperatures from 25 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. A. Enzyme and substrate at all temperatures tested. B. Enzyme and boiled substrate at all temperatures tested. C. Boiled enzyme only at all temperatures tested. D. Substrate only at all temperatures tested. Statement A describes the actual experiment and not the control experiment. Therefore, statement A is incorrect. If you look at statement C, if enzyme is boiled, then no reaction occurs at all. Hence, statement C is also incorrect. And considering between B and D, now how do we decide which one is correct? Well, a control experiment should generally have only one factor altered at a time. Therefore, statement D is a correct choice as only one factor is involved, that is the substrate. Whereas in answer B, both the enzyme and boiled substrate at all temperatures are tested. Therefore, B is incorrect, leaving us with the answer being D. Substrate only at all temperatures tested. Question 14. An investigation is carried out with an enzyme at its optimum temperature and pH. The rate of the enzyme reaction is measured at different substrate concentrations. The investigation is repeated in the presence of a comparative inhibitor. How will the results with the comparative inhibitor be different from the original results? A key thing to note over here is that they have mentioned comparative inhibitor. In the presence of a comparative inhibitor, the Vmax always stays the same and the affinity towards the substrate will decrease. Since the Vmax always stays the same, you have to consider between the answers B and D. If the affinity towards the substrate decreases, the Km increases as they have opposite correlation. Therefore, that leaves us with the answer being B. Km with comparative inhibitor higher, Vmax the same. Question 15. Which description of cell surface membrane permeability is correct? A. An increase in the concentration of cholesterol molecules in the cell surface membrane can increase its permeability to hydrophilic substances. That is incorrect. As cholesterol molecules, they prevent the passage of hydrophilic substances taking place in the cell surface membrane. Answer B. Cell surface membrane permeability to large hydrophilic molecules is high. That is incorrect. As the cell surface membrane doesn't allow large hydrophilic molecules to pass through, but rather small hydrophobic molecules to pass through. Answer C. The permeability of the cell surface membrane to ions increases as the proportion of saturated fatty acid chains in the phospholipids increases. That is incorrect as the permeability increases with increased proportion of unsaturated fatty acid chains, not saturated, as only unsaturated fatty acids have double bonds and double bonds in the chains leads to bent chains, therefore increasing the permeability. And that leaves us with the answer being D. Without the presence of carrier and channel membrane proteins, the cell surface membrane has a low permeability to large polar molecules. Hence, the answer is D. Question 16. Which transport mechanism within a cell can occur in the absence of membranes? Out of all these options, the obvious answer is diffusion. It is because if you look at an example, such as a diffusion of gases in the air, it doesn't require membranes. Hence, the answer is B. Diffusion. Question 17. A student measure the time taken for complete diffusion of a dye into agar blocks of different sizes. The results were shown in the table. What is the predicted time for complete diffusion of the dye into the agar block? 
measuring 5 mm into 10 mm into 15 mm. Remember, we have to consider the distance for the die to reach the center of each agar block. The 5 mm into 10 mm into 15 mm block has a minimum thickness of 5 mm. So the diffusion distance to the center is 2.5 mm. Likewise, if you go to the sizes given in the table, the minimum size of the first one is 5, of the second is 10, of the third is 15, and of the fourth is again 5. Then we should consider the diffusion distance to the center. So the minimum thickness we just obtained, we divide by 2 to get the diffusion distance to the center. And if you look at that distance obtained, which is 2.5 mm of the agar block measuring 5 mm into 10 mm into 15 mm, this is the same as the size of agar block 5 mm into 5 into 5. Hence, the time for diffusion taken will be 6.2 seconds, as the diffusion distance to the center of both is the same, which is 2.5 mm. Therefore, the answer is A. Question 18. A plant cell with a water potential of minus 600 kilopascals was placed in a solution with a water potential of minus 410 kilopascals for 10 minutes. Which row is correct? The plant cell, which was at a water potential of minus 600 kilopascals, was placed in a solution which had a higher water potential than the cell. As less negative the number, higher the water potential. Therefore, the net movement of water will be into the cell. As the solution had higher water potential than the cell initially, therefore water will move into the cell. As a result, the water potential of cell becomes higher and the effect on the cell is that the cell becomes turgid. Plant cells do not burst as they have a strong cell wall which resists the cell from bursting. Therefore, answer B is incorrect and that leaves us with the answer being A. Question 19. Which cells contain telomeres that are longer than those in a helper T lymphocyte secreting cytokines? 1. Bone marrow stem cells 2. Mature red blood cells 3. Activated memory B lymphocytes Answer 2 is obviously incorrect as red blood cells do not undergo mitosis or multiple cell divisions therefore telomeres can't be present and that leaves us with the answer being either B or D and out of those two the obvious answer is B 1 and 3 as bone marrow stem cells do undergo multiple cell divisions as well as activated memory B lymphocytes do undergo mitosis when they come in contact with a foreign substance such as an antigen. Therefore, the answer is B, 1 and 3. Question 20. In which stage of the cell cycle are telomeres needed to prevent the loss of genes? Telomeres are present to prevent loss of genes during the DNA replication process. And DNA replication occurs only in the S phase of the interface. And out of all these options, answer D has S phase. Therefore, the answer is D, S phase. Question 21. Which row shows part of the correct sequence of mitosis? The correct sequence is prophase followed by metaphase, followed by anaphase, and lastly telophase. Since they're asking about the part of the sequence, that leaves us with the answer being C. As all the other answers, A, B, and D do not follow the correct sequence. Hence, the answer is C. Chromosomes line up at the equator, that is metaphase. Spindle fiber shorten, that occurs in the anaphase. Nuclear envelope reappears, that occurs in the telophase. Chromosomes uncoil, that again occurs in the telophase. There can be two stages of the telophase, early telophase and late telophase. Hence, they do form the correct sequence. Therefore, the answer is C. Question 22. What is correct for cytosine? Remember that cytosine, thymine and uracil, they all three have a single ring structure and are pyrimidines. Therefore, is cytosine a pyrimidine? Yes. And that leaves us with the answer being either A or C. And does cytosine have a single ring structure? Yes, that is also correct. Therefore, the answer is A. If you look at the third column, joins to its complementary base with three hydrogen bonds? Yes. As cytosine binds with guanine, using triple bonds and adenine bonds with thymine using double bonds. Therefore, the answer is A. Question 23. Scientists grew bacteria in a medium containing heavy nitrogen, 15N, as the only source of nitrogen. After many generations, both strands of all of the bacterial DNA molecules contained heavy nitrogen. These bacteria were then moved from the heavy nitrogen medium into a medium with only light nitrogen, that is 14N. 
the bacteria divided once to form the first generation and once more to form the second generation. A sample of bacteria was collected from the second generation and the DNA was analyzed to find the percentage of DNA strands that contained only light nitrogen, the percentage of DNA molecules that contained light nitrogen and heavy nitrogen, which row shows the results of this analysis. Well, this is a long question. However, you need to know what are the key points. They have mentioned second generation and they want us to find what is the percentage of DNA strands that contains light nitrogen and the percentage of DNA molecules that contain light nitrogen and heavy nitrogen. Observe the difference. The first one asks for DNA strands and the second one asks for DNA molecules. Now if you go to the rows, after the first generation, there will be 100% of light and heavy nitrogen. And at second generation, it will consist of 50% hybrid, that is light and heavy, and 50% light only. If you want to visualize the process even further, I have drawn the diagram down below. If you look at this diagram, initially both strands will be 15 nitrogen and after the first generation you will obtain 15 nitrogen, 14 nitrogen as well as 15 nitrogen and 14 nitrogen. Therefore 100% of DNA molecules will contain both light and heavy nitrogen. Following the first generation comes the second generation and in the second generation you get 50% of light and heavy nitrogen as well as 50% of light nitrogen only. Now since they are asking only for the percentage of DNA strands that contain only light nitrogen in the second generation, we have to count the number of strands that contains only light nitrogen, that is 14N. And if you look at the second generation, there are, there are 6 strands of light nitrogen out of 8. And that leaves us with the percentage being 75%. Hence we have to consider between C and D. Why is C incorrect? It is because it mentions the percentage of DNA molecules that contain light and heavy being 25%. However, the percentage of DNA molecules containing light and heavy is actually 50% as one molecule consists of two strands. Hence the answer is D. Question 24. The table shows the tRNA anticodons for four amino acids. A cell makes a polypeptide containing the amino acid sequence shown. Which sequence of bases on the transcribed strand of a DNA molecule could code for this part of the polypeptide? The table shows tRNA anticodons and we should get the corresponding DNA molecule. Hence, bases of tRNA will be the same as the bases of a DNA molecule except that U is replaced by T as U is only present in RNA and not in DNA. Since asparagine starts with UU, it should be TT for a DNA molecule. Therefore, the answer being either C or D. Since threonine starts with U in all the anticodons, the DNA bases should start with T. Therefore, the answer is D. Question 25. The photomicrograph shows a section of a plant organ. Students were asked to study the photomicrograph and identify the organ giving a reason to support the answer. You should be familiar with this photomicrograph given. This is of a dicot stem. And if we look at the answers, A. It is a leaf because the xylem is located. That is incorrect as it is not a leaf but a stem. B. It is a stem because there is a ring of endodermis visible around the edge of the vascular tissue. That is incorrect as in this photomicrograph we cannot visualize any endodermis given. C. It is a stem because the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring near the epidermis. Yes, that is correct as it is of a stem and also due to the vascular bundles being arranged in a ring. If you look at this photomicrograph, it does show that it is arranged in a ring towards the outer region of the photomicrograph. Hence the answer is C. D. It is a xerophytic leaf because there is a thick epidermis made up of many layers of cells that doesn't correctly identify the organ as it is not a leaf but rather a stem. Hence D is incorrect. Question 26. What is correct about the apoplastic pathway and symplastic pathway in a root? The apoplastic pathway is nothing but the movement through cell walls and intercellular air spaces and the symplastic pathway is the movement through plasmodesmata as well as through cytoplasm by osmosis.
Therefore, if we consider the answers A, B, C, and D, A. Casparian strip blocks the movement of water in aplastic pathway. Yes, that is correct. Water moves across the root through cell walls for symplastic pathway. That is incorrect as cell wall movement is concerned with aplastic pathway. Hence, A is incorrect. B. Water moves across the root through cell walls for aplastic pathway is correct. Water moves from cell to cell through the plasmodesmata for symplastic pathway is also correct. Hence, the answer is B. If you look at C, water moves from cell to cell through the plasmodesmata under apoplastic pathway. That is incorrect as plasmodesmata is concerned with symplastic pathway. D, water passes through the cytoplasm for apoplastic pathway. That is again incorrect as cytoplasm movement is concerned with symplastic pathway. Therefore, the answer is B. Question 27. Sucrose moves into a phloem sieve tube element from a leaf mesophyll cell. Which changes to the water potential and the volume of solution in the phloem sieve tube element are correct. This right here represents the loading of sucrose into the phloem sieve tube. And when sucrose is loaded, the water potential in the phloem sieve tube element decreases. Hence the answer being either C or D. When the water potential of the phloem sieve tube element decreases, the volume of solution increases as water enters the sieve tube from regions of higher water potential. Therefore, the answer is D. Water potential becomes lower, volume of solution increases. Question 28. The photomicrograph shows three white blood cells labeled X, Y, and Z. Which row correctly identifies these cells? Y is of a lobe nucleus, hence is a neutrophil. X is a circular nucleus, therefore it is a lymphocyte. Z is a kidney-shaped nucleus, hence is a monocyte. And if we go to the answers A, B, C, and D, the correct answer is B. Question 29. Which row correctly identifies the locations in which a type of molecule or cell is present? Large plasma protein. Now large plasma protein is not present in tissue fluid as it is unable to pass through the pores of blood capillaries due to its large size. Therefore, answer B is incorrect. We go to answer C, lymphocyte. Yes, it is present in blood. Yes, it is present in lymph. And yes, it should be present in tissue fluid. Therefore, since they have marked as not present in tissue fluid, answer C is incorrect. D, phagocyte. Again, they have marked phagocyte as not present under blood. Therefore, it is incorrect. As lymphocytes and phagocytes are present throughout the body. Hence, the answer is A, antibody. And yes, antibody is present throughout the body too. It is present in the blood, lymph, and tissue fluid. Question 30. The graph shows the changes in pressure that occur in the left side of the heart during one cardiac cycle. At which time are the semilunar valves in the heart open? I have marked where the semilunar valve open and where the semilunar valve closes. And if you go to the answers A, B, C, and D, it can't be C as well as D because semilunar valve closes after 0.4 seconds. And since C and D are higher than 0.4 seconds, they are incorrect. Considering between answer A and B, it cannot be A because at 0.1 second, the semilunar valve doesn't open. However, we can conclude that at 0.3 seconds, the semilunar valves in the heart are open. Therefore, the answer is B, 0.3 seconds. Question 31. What would change the ratio of red blood cells to white blood cells in the blood of a healthy human? One development of leukemia. 2. Infection with variola. 3. Living for 6 months at high altitude. Yes, living at high altitude does lead to an increase in red blood cell. Therefore, the ratio of red blood cells will change. If you look at 2. Infection with variola. Variola is a virus and infection with a virus would lead to an immune response causing increase in the number of white blood cells. Therefore, again it causes the ratio of white blood cells to red blood cells change. Hence, 2 is also correct. 1. Development of leukemia. Leukemia affects the white blood cell count, hence again 1 does affect the ratio. Therefore, the answer is A, 1, 2, and 3. Question 32. The diagram represents three types of cell found in the human gas exchange system. Which of these cell types could be affected when a person is exposed to tar in cigarette smoke? X is goblet cell, Y is ciliated cell, as you can see, thin strands of cilia and Z is squamous cell. The cell types which are affected when a person is exposed to tar is definitely the goblet cell and the ciliated cell. Hence, X and Y should both be present. And since only A has X and Y in it, the answer is A, X, Y, and Z. 
Question 33. The photomicrograph shows part of the lung as seen using a light microscope. Which row correctly identifies the features labeled 1, 2 and 3? I have labeled which one is which. 1 represents the bronchiol, 2 represents the small artery, 3 represents the alveoli. Also, you should be remembering the photomicrograph given as well as the features labeled 1, 2 and 3. And since 1 is bronchiol, the only answer possible is C. 1 being bronchiol, 2 being small artery, 3 being alveolus. Question 34. How many times must a molecule of oxygen pass through a cell surface membrane as it diffuses from inside an alveolus through a cell in the capillary wall to bind to a molecule of hemoglobin? Now oxygen must cross two cell surface membranes of the alveolus, that is the inner and outer surface. Then to reach a molecule of hemoglobin, oxygen must pass through two cell surface membranes of the capillary wall and one of red blood cell. If you search online the diagram of an alveolus lying next to a capillary, you will clearly see how many cell surface membranes are involved. And if you count the number of cell surface membranes involved, the answer is C. 5 cell surface membranes. Question 35. A disease is an abnormal disruption to the functioning of an organism or part of an organism. Which disruption to function is an example of infectious disease? A. Airflow to one lung is disrupted by uncontrolled cell division forming a mass of cells that is related to tumor formation, not infectious disease, hence it is incorrect. B. Airways become inflamed due to exposure to smoke that is not an infectious disease as infectious disease involves an immune response such as multiplication of prokaryotic cells or production of antibodies by B lymphocytes. Therefore, B is incorrect. C. Oxygen transport is disrupted due to changes in protein shape in red blood cells. That is again not an example of an infectious disease as it doesn't involve any foreign substance or an immune response. D. Lung tissue is disrupted by the multiplication of prokaryotic cells. Yes, that is correct. As multiplication of prokaryotic cells is involved in an immune response. An immune response is an example of an infectious disease. Therefore, the answer is D. Question 36. The number of people at risk of contracting malaria has increased due to an increase in the distribution of Anopheles mosquitoes. What could be the cause of this increase in the distribution of Anopheles mosquitoes? A. Antibiotic resistance. B. Drug resistance in Plasmodium. C. No effective vaccine. D. Global warming. Development of drug resistance in Plasmodium would increase the cases of malaria, but it would not affect the distribution of the mosquito itself. Since they are asking which affects the distribution of Anopheles mosquitoes, it should have something to do with the climate. And since Anopheles mosquitoes favor tropical and warm climates, global warming is the answer. Therefore, the answer is D, global warming. Question 37. Which diseases are treated with antibiotics? You should keep in mind that antibiotics are ineffective against viruses. They only work against bacteria. Therefore, since measles is caused by a virus, measles shouldn't be treated with antibiotics. Therefore, the answer being A. Cholera and TB. As both cholera and TB are caused by a bacterium. Cholera is caused by Vibrio cholerae. TB is caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis or Mycobacterium bovis. Therefore, the answer is A. Question 38. Which row correctly describes B lymphocytes? Process in the thymus? That is incorrect as only T lymphocytes are processed in the thymus. Release antibodies immediately after formation. That is again incorrect, as B lymphocytes only release antibodies when they come in contact with a foreign antigen, and that is during an immune response. They do not release immediately after formation. Therefore, the answer is D. Question 39. Which features of monoclonal antibodies are important to their use in the treatment of cancer? 1. They can bind to tumor-associated antigens. 2. They can distinguish between different strains of pathogens. 3. They can deliver drugs to specific targets. Monoclonal antibodies are used in targeted therapy. Therefore, 3 is very important. As well as to treat cancer, antibodies should be able to bind with antigens causing cancer. Hence, 1 is important too. Therefore, the only answer which has both 1 and 3 being important is B. Hence, the answer is B. Question 40. 
A student was asked to explain why vaccination has successfully eradicated smallpox but not other diseases such as measles, malaria and sickle cell anemia. These are the statements made by the student. 1. The antigens of the virus causing smallpox did not change, unlike the antigens of the virus causing measles. Yes, that is a possible explanation. 2. Sickle cell anemia has many different types of mutation unlike smallpox, so each would require a vaccine. That is incorrect, as sickle cell anemia is caused by only one type of mutation and that mutation is called substitution mutation. 3. Unlike smallpox, malaria involves animals as part of the transmission cycle and this makes the cycle harder to break. Yes, that is correct, as smallpox did not involve animals in transmission, hence the cycle was easier to break, whereas malaria does. And the only answer with 3 in it is A. Therefore, the answer is A, 1, 3 and 4. Let's look at statement 4, 2. The vaccine against measles often causes a poor primary immune response so that booster vaccines are required unlike the vaccine against smallpox. Yes, that is correct. As smallpox is, a, as smallpox is caused by a stable virus and since the virus was stable, it did not mutate. Since there were no mutations, it did not require booster vaccinations. Hence, the possible explanations are 1, 3 and 4 only. Therefore, the answer is A. And that is the end of the paper. If you did learn something new from this video, that is great news. For more content, do like this video and turn on the notifications. Until then, stay tuned for more.